All right, so what was the start of the year like for us? We kind of knew as broadcasting with Spark, we knew that there was a new program coming in with Butler Tech, and so we had been talking with the people who were in that program, and we thought about different ways to partner up and try to combine forces and make it kind of like a partnership between what we call Lakota East Broadcast and Lakota East Spark. And that kind of gave us a little bit of a vision, but we kind of wanted to put a lot of our own stuff in practice as well. And it was really a lot of trial and error because you would get out to a game and we realized, our first football game, our first game ever, we got out there and we realized we just did not get there with enough time to set up. and. We were just scrambling. Kickoff was happening, and we still weren't even fully set up. Yeah, I would agree. That first football game that we ever did, that was, like, crazy. It was absolutely nothing like how our system operates now. We were just panicked, running in circles, didn't know what was going on, had no idea, like, as far as we had a, we had a bunch of, like, technical issues, and we had no idea, like, how to fix them and, like, what to go about doing in order to, like, mitigate those and get the stream actually running at the time. Sorry, still struggling with some technical difficulties. Uh, first, first stream, getting set up, um, setting up, dealing with a few difficulties, but uh, happy to be, be back for the game. Looks to be a false start there. What we missed during the technical difficulties was a long ball down the field, pass interference call, called on Lakota. So that was honestly one of the most difficult things. Luckily, as we like continued on doing more football games afterwards, we were able to like quickly iron a lot of those out. So it was a much better product. Even after like the very next stream that we did, we came in a lot earlier. We're a lot more methodical with it, um, set things up a lot earlier, and it really turned out a lot better on those second streams and the following streams after that than the very first one. Keep making improvements, and every stream we would just get better and better. And I think that just kind of snowballed throughout all the football games, and just being set up as well. Like it was just incredibly impressive how far the program had come in just literally like two months. So Lakota East High School, a very special presentation here today from the home of the Thunderhawks down here in front of the Hawks Nest. It is a combined stream we have going on here, Lakota East and Lakota West doing broadcasting. Of course. As always, thank you for tuning into the stream. It is stupid the support that Lakota West Broadcasting gets, and it's due to you guys that East is branched out too. They got a broadcasting club, and it is quite phenomenal. So, what was the process like for East versus West? So, when we were planning East versus West, we knew that we wanted to do a collaboration with the other program at West. And so, I talked with him, and we were like, well, yeah, we really want to do something and work together because we think that it could be really cool to combine the schools for such a big game like East versus West. Um, and so, we uh, set up a meeting and we really planned it out to be something like an ESPN game day uh, style show. And so we were marketing it as like high school game day kind of thing like that. And we knew that we wanted to have a pregame show where we all would sit on a panel and there would be four of us. It would be me and uh, my analyst and then Nick and his analyst. And it's just similar to the panel that you see when you turn on ESPN every morning at 10 a.m. Um, and so we were preparing and making sure that everything was actually absolutely perfect. Um, what we wanted to do for the stream is we wanted to have that ESPN panel but we also wanted to have our student section in the background getting really hype for us in the background of our stream. And to do that, obviously, you have to let the student body of the entire school know to get there really early for the game. And so we just wanted to get the word out as much as we could, get there early, be there at like 6 o'clock. That way we can start the stream early and have everyone in the background getting super hype for us. And so while they're doing the pregame show, we have our entire team at East Broadcast down there behind the cameras basically just waiting for the moment that they ended. That way we could start cleaning up. Everyone had about three or four things that they were responsible for getting off the field. And then from then on it basically just operated like a normal stream. They basically, all the commentators just unplugged their mics when they were done doing the pregame show, ran up the bleachers up into the press box and got going up there while we were all down clearing everything off. I think that he'll have a great opportunity to get those looks for the next level, especially with the timing Kitna coming in, Coach Kitna, because he is also pushing that. He understands the value of social media and contacting other coaches. I am certain that Hooks will have that same outreach as him. And we welcome you back to Xavier University's Centos Center. Colin Kunz here alongside Camden Braden getting ready to start our second half of action. This has been an interesting game so far. Thunderhawks kept it close in the first quarter. Colonels, though, starting to run away with it a little bit. Yeah, it has been a very interesting game indeed. So we had the opportunity to travel down to Cintas Center at Xavier University um, for a championship game that our basketball team was able to participate in. And um, it was a really unique event. Um, one of, again, one of our biggest events of the year besides like East versus West games. Um, so it was really awesome. We got to bring the whole, pretty much the whole crew down there and dress up professionally and go behind the scenes. 
Um, when we checked in, we got press passes. They were free range, so we got to go anywhere in the arena. Um, and that felt really cool because it was like, hey, like I have this press pass that I can, you know, go wherever I want with. Yeah. And that was really like one of those big time, like it was almost a you made it moment. Yeah. It's like you have access to all of this, like you you deserve to be here, kind of thing. Um, but looking at it now from a commentator's standpoint, this was this was one of I think the most fun games to call all year. Winning those middle eight, yeah, absolutely. It's been a joy here to be at the Cintas Center tonight. Want to shout out all of our crew. We have Ben and Jacob alongside Colin and Cameron up in the booth today. We had Matthew, Ariana, Owen, Aiden, Yen, Reed, everybody working cameras. Super great turnout here for this game at the Centos Center. Glad to bring it to you. We'll be back. Okay, so where do we see the club going next year? Um, we have a great team, honestly, that we've picked. Just whoever stepped up to the plate and wanted to do it, we said absolutely, go ahead, do it. Um, so it's a great team next year that we have put together. I'm really confident they'll be able to help improve this club even more. Um, you know, this was just our first year of operation, but it was absolutely like huge for us. We accomplished so much this year. It's just crazy to even look back on. So um, honestly, we gave them a high, a high bar that they have to cross, but I'm confident that they can do it. I think they can really do it. It's going to be more photography next year, better photography. Um, you know, we have more people for it now than we did at the start of this year, and they're better suited for it. So I think it's going to be really good for that. I could see them going super in depth with that. Um, sideline reporting was something huge that we tried out a couple times and it went okay, but I can see them also sort of narrowing that down. I think that is something that would be huge for the stream and I'm really hoping that's something that they're able to get into next year. So I know we have, uh, we'll be retaining uh, Owen, Reed and Aiden and then adding Isabel and Ryan. Uh, and having those three to anchor will be really good because they all know um, what they're talking about and how to set up the streams and that kind of thing. Uh, they all have gotten the experience and really have learned alongside us and from us a little bit. Um, and so I think that that's a really good base to have and I think that they'll set a good example for everybody in the program. And so I'm really hoping that as we continue to expand that we can get more of those real world opportunities. Could adding the program was definitely a good move because kids are passionate about this and kids love it. I mean, if I could have had this program my freshman year, I would have been over the moon. I've had so much time in here in just a year, and I, I hope that so many other kids will be able to get those same opportunities that I've been able to get this year, and, and maybe bigger and better opportunities than I've had. But I know that it can keep getting bigger, and there is more still to expand just because the broadcast world is so huge. And I really hope that it does continue to expand. But I just can't thank everybody that's, that's stepped up and helped enough. Um, I mean, I, I keep telling the story where it was just so small last year how we started. We only recovered maybe four games, and we were using half of my equipment. And, and there it was a passion, and I knew that I wanted to, to continue it, and I'm glad that it's been able to continue this year. And it, would have been, it wouldn't have been possible with all the people that stepped up and helped because they have really turned the program into something that, that is incredible, and I hope that it will be able to continue for, for years going ahead. Yeah, kind of similar to what Colin said there. Um, can't thank everyone in this program enough. You know, it started with just our dream here to make this program huge and make it something that you know, would be a staple of East, and I think we can say that we've done that. But you know, there was tons of people all in this club who were you know, in the weeds with us day one, helping us make this club great. And I think that's amazing. I think that's the best part of you know, doing this club and clubs in general at East is you know, it brings out the best talent and it brings out the best people. Um, you know, shout out to Mr. Bach, our um, advisor for the club. He is incredible. He helped us a lot. Um, shout out to Nick Johnson from West for his great you know, leadership and sort of helping us get started. I had a goal before senior year started. I told myself, hey, like, I really want to make senior year fun for myself, and I want to do something that I really enjoy through senior year because, you know, it's my last year of high school. And I think I absolutely was able to do that through broadcasting. So, you know, if you're looking into, you know, sort of, um, I guess, making your high school a little bit more fun and, you know, bettering your experience, join clubs, join broadcasts, you know any club really, um, meet new people. I think that's the best thing you can really do. Alrighty. Was this thing on? <laughs> I hope, right? Yeah, off. mine was. Imagine it was just off the whole time. What a year. That was fun to talk about all that. Yeah, that was a yap sesh. Yeah, it was. Great game to call today, and it's been great calling the Thunderhawks all season. Do want to thank you for joining us today. This has been Colin Kunz and Camden Braden signing off.